And you talked about, you know, a variety of swarms, such as a, a flock of birds or a school of fish. And yet your platform, UNU, is for some reason modeled after uh, honeybee swarms. Right. So why did you make that specific choice? I mean, aren't we closer on the evolutionary tree to birds and to fish rather than honeybees? Right. No, it's a great, uh, it's a great uh, question. And we can even just take one step back a little bit and say, you know, when you go all the way back on artificial intelligence research, which starts maybe you know, back in the 1950s, the first place everybody looks for when doing artificial intelligence is nature. And so we look to nature because you're trying to create an artificial intelligence and the real ones exist in nature. And starting back in the 1950s, the first path was uh, to develop the development of the perceptron, which turned into uh, artificial neurons, which turned into neural networks. And so neural networks are the primary way that most, most artificial intelligence research is being pursued right now. And it's a biological model. And what's, what's worth mentioning is that nature is not a one trick pony. Nature actually has two ways that it creates intelligence, at least two, maybe there's others that, that we don't know of, but it has neural based intelligences like our own brains. And it has swarms that biologists call swarm intelligence. And so swarm intelligence, um, is where you, you have groups that are going to be smarter as a, as a collective than they are apart. And that is why uh, fish school, and that is why birds flock, and that is why bees, bees swarm. Now, if you look at schooling and flocking, uh, the primary benefits that, that we've at least identified thus far in, in flocks and schools is the ability of a group, of a, of a large group, to move together as one. It's really, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's amazing what schools and flocks can do, and they allow groups to, to, uh, to move as one, to evade predators, to, to uh, navigate uh, long distances, whether it's in the air or underwater. And so schools and flocks are, are amazing, and artificial intelligence researchers have looked at that for, for example, controlling drones, where they, you know, there's a lot of work about using schooling and flocking to control a, a group of drones getting the same benefits. Now, when we look at intelligence and we look at, well, where do we see real, real evidence of, of amplified intelligence, it, the most fascinating place is honeybee swarms, because honeybee swarms aren't using swarming to, to move as a group. And, and I say that because honeybee swarms will fly basically as a flock, and that's a flocking behavior. But when we talk about swarming for honeybees, it's a decision-making process. Honeybees use swarming to make decisions, and they actually demonstrate uh, creation of a higher level of intelligence. And so let me give you an example of what honeybees do, because what, what it's, most people don't realize how amazing honeybees are. And, um, and so you know, every, uh, every year, a honeybee swarm will spawn a new swarm. And that new swarm has to go, uh, uh, that new colony, it has a new colony that will have to go out and find a new home. And so you'll have like 10,000 bees that, that will now need to go and leave a hive and find a new home. And that's a very dangerous uh, and important process. And they, they need to pick a, a home site. And so what they do is they send out a couple, uh, two to 500 scout bees that will, that will actually search a 30 square mile area looking for home sites. And they'll bring, they'll bring back to the swarm dozens of potential sites that, um, that they found. And they, bring, and they can actually encode the position and the location of these sites in body vibrations. So they actually do something, wow. called, a, they do something called a waggle dance, which encodes the, act, the exact location of these sites that they found. And then, the swarm will go through a collective process using these waggle dances to select among a few dozen potential sites. They do this collectively where about two to 500 bees are doing this, basically this waggle dance, where they're all pushing and pulling on the decision, very much modeled, I mean, that's what we modeled our, our swarm after, how these bees push and pull on the decision. And what's one of the things that's inspired me is that, um, some really amazing work has been done to study bees. Uh, there's a, a professor, Thomas Seeley, uh, in Cornell, who, uh, who did painstaking work to, to literally track bees. And what he found was that 
they will, even though it's this amazingly complex decision with picking sites across 30 square miles based on you know a dozen different competing criteria, they will pick the optimal site at least 80% of the time. If you guys enjoyed this show, you can help me make it better in a couple of ways. You can go and write a review on iTunes or you can simply make a donation. 